What's up everyone, this is Frank from Marsman Gaming, and today I will be reviewing Lies of P by NeoWiz. Lies of P is the new quote-unquote Souls-like experience to enter the ring. We have seen plenty of titles making this claim, from Wolong Fallen Dynasty to Remnant 2, to Blasphemous 2, to Armored Core 6, wait, from software made that last, but you get the idea. Each one of these games have tried to resemble aspects of these classic from software games that we all love, adding their own twist or identity. For Lies of P, we are following the well known badass protagonist Pinocchio and his story to save the city of Croc. But questions arose Is Lies of P a true Souls like experience? Does it separate itself from the group of other quote unquote Souls like games? Is it actually fun? I give the good, the bad, and answer these questions in my final verdict. There is no strings holding me down, let's dive into it. But before we continue with the review, if you like this kind of content on a variety of games which includes reviews, opinion pieces, and streams, make sure to hit that sub button and join the crew. And now back to the review. First off, I want to start with the good. We have seen many developers over the years try and copy or mimic many aspects of these famous From Software games. And Lies of P is no different. They have Ergo, which is used to level up similar to runes and souls. Stargazers as checkpoints similar to lamps or sites of grace. Gameplay loops of a mixture of attacking and dodging slash parrying. High difficulty that leads to you losing your damn ergo when you die to the same boss 10 freaking times, which could lead to some molding moments. One thing that Lies of P does that really stood out to me was its environment, environmental storytelling. Lies of P is a dark, creepy world. The lighting is done very well. The detail Details and level design show some uniqueness, but they don't feel out of place even through my 30 hour experience. And it really emphasizes a world riddled with disease, madness, and bloodlust. Out of all the Souls like game, it really reminded me closest to Bloodborne. And that to me is a home run. Big kudos to the Lies of P developers. The second good aspect that stood out to me was the content and customization. This game gives you a strong 25 to 35 hours to complete the main story and over 50 hours to complete all the side quests and side content. They give you 30 weapons, but in this specific game, you can craft weapons and change handles which allow you to transform those 30 weapons to a hundred different combinations. For context, Wolong Fallen Dynasty has 16 weapons, and Bloodborne, which many compare this game to including myself, had 15. Add the weapons with 8 legion arms, over 20 amulets, and the ability to upgrade your character with skill points and perks gives you strong variability on how you want to play forward on your adventure. Oh, and if you like dressing up your character, they have 17 different costumes to get as well. The final good I want to address for Lies of P is the bosses. For any game that is a quote unquote souls like experience, what I envision are some epic bosses that are challenging and not the same cut and paste enemies you see throughout the levels. Lies of P does this well in my opinion. There are 25 bosses and the designs are cool, they ha each have a uniqueness to them, and boy, can they be difficult, but very rewarding. I don't want to spoil anything, but there are some bosses that will have you contemplating your life choices during the fight and fill you with massive sense of joy and excitement when finally completing them. Also a nice touch to allow summoning for some assistance with some of these bosses for some of the scrubs like myself. With the good, we have to talk about the bad. The number one thing that annoyed the hell out of me on this game was the parrying and guarding system. This game has a strong emphasis on staggering your enemies similar to that of Bloodborne and Sekiro. And there are two types of guards, the basic guard or perfect guard. The perfect guard helps you stagger your enemies quicker and even potentially break weapons. And using basic guard does block the majority of the attack, but you receive some damage called guard regain. This mechanism allows you to regain the lost HP by attacking the enemy before the regain period ends. The problem is the parry window is so unforgiving and the enemy's attacks can vary between charge attacks quick attacks, delayed attacks, that it makes it mind-numbingly painful at times. And the rolling is not much better. If you're trying to avoid the parry system and rely more on the roll, you don't get much distance rolling, but it's not as bad as the parry slash guard system. And I know the get good crowd will be crying to me in my comments, calling me out, telling me to get good, but the more you play this game, the more this system shows its clunkiness and inconsistency. We saw it as an issue in the demo, and unfortunately, we have not seen a vastly improved change. The second bad aspect I want to bring up is the lying system. And again, 
without spoiling too much, you have opportunities throughout the game to either lie or tell the truth in different scenarios. You have the opportunity in the game to tell the truth or lie during missions and side quests, which can earn you humanity points. Now the game has three endings, and two of them revolve around your honesty. This sounds very cool, and I love the idea or concept of the lying system kind of bringing in that old Pinocchio story. But the more you play it, the more you feel how shallow it is. It just feels like an appetizer when you wanted a full course meal. I wish there was more side quests, that this system can feel more impactful. I and many others either recommend being a complete liar or being an honest saint as trying to maneuver in between those two based on the situation doesn't really give you the payoff you're hoping for, or at least it did for me. The final bad aspect I wanted to address is a smaller one, but something I think worth mentioning, and that is the forced leveling at Hotel Crap. When you get enough Ergo, you can level up, but the problem is you can't do it at these checkpoints or stargazers. When you get to these stargazers, you get the checkpoint, but you can fast travel to other checkpoints or back to the hotel. For whatever reason, they do not allow you to level up at the checkpoints. You have to fast travel to the hotel to level up. And I just don't understand why. At first, it did not bother me, but the more hours you put in and getting the amount of ergo that you do, you're gonna have to stop what you're doing, go over to the hotel, level up, or risk potentially losing those ergos when you die. Not the biggest thing, but still a pain in your side. Overall, I think Liza P has some good and bad. The world and story is engaging, the weapons are fun to use and customize, and bosses can be epic to beat. The lying system is a cool idea, but doesn't have the depth or execution as well as I hoped it would. I am giving Liza P an 8.4 out of 10. This game definitely gives you a solid Bloodborne type experience and does create its own identity in this new Souls like genre. I recommend this game for those looking for another Souls-like experience to scratch that itch. But if you're looking for this to fill that empty void of a Bloodborne remaster or a Bloodborne sequel, this may only quench your thirst temporarily. Thank you everyone for watching. If you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. This is Frank, checking out. See ya.